Um, the next game I want to talk about is uh, Outlast 2. Uh, it was on Game Pass. I, th I think you've, I think you've even owned it on PC for a while. I just never got around to it. Um, I the demo. The played... Oh, I didn't even know there was a demo. Like way back when it first came out, I think it was like the first like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I, I don't even know. What, so, so just just story premise. Um, Outlast Two hasn't. Mm, it doesn't have anything major to do with Outlast One. Outlast One is you going to a asylum for um meant. I, I don't know the correct way to say it. Uh, you go to a, a, an asylum filled with uh, cr criminals, and they're all trying to fucking kill you. It's it's a pretty good horror game. Uh, second game, you crash into a, a mountain region somewhere, and there's a bunch of cultists. It's 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 really fucking brutal. It's yeah, it, it it's it's beyond fucked up. Like if if you Man, this, this game, like, me personally, I'm good. I can go to any piece of media, spoiler-free, content warning-free, and I'm good. But damn, this game is, like, over-the-top, fucking non-stop brutal, like, step by step by step by step. It is. It's gruesome. Like, there's people getting flayed, there's limbs getting cut off, there's babies of the dead variety in pits. It's... There's pit of babies. I remember the pit of babies. It's that, uh, but I, it's okay. I, I'm really it, if you if you love horror movies, if you love gore, this is absolutely gonna be up your alley. Like me and my girlfriend, we we love freaking oh completely over the top horror movies. Um, but like I I, I will always stand behind the argument that uh does Outlast two ha also have dicks? Yes, it has many a dicks. <laughs> yes, I, I I feel like some of those developers giggle to themselves as they like painfully sculpt in like v, v brush like the creepy dicks that they put into that that game because like, I mean, come on you kind of have to like if you're designing dicks in anything you have to <laughs> laugh about it to an extent it, like, it's it's uh 99 percent blood and gore 69 percent dicks um the one thing I will say, you said it wasn't connected. Actually, all the Outlast games are connected via. I, I, I don't. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, they just just like. I mean, you can say that they're all connected. You just like you just like you you, you just don't have to spoil they, it. There, there's some sinew between uh between them. I'll say that. I will say I do like how they connect everything. The way that they connect everything is kind of interesting to me. Uh, the way that they did it in Outlast One. And the way that they do it in two, I will give them that much that it's mm -hmm. an, that it's an interesting horror premise to me, um, at least to me anyway. But I like weird horror shit, and that's all Outlast One was was <laughs> weird horror. Yeah. Shit. Um, uh, but to, to Emily's, you talking about the limbs flay kind of made me like laugh a little bit because I remember when I was like nine playing like Gears of War and chainsawing people for the first time, being like, <laughs> and now I look at I look at Outlast and I'm like. I can't see what's being played off because the graphics are so bad. <laughs> this might seem extremely premature to me. I don't have kids. I plan on having kids in the future. I would much rather my kids sooner play Gears of War than Outlast. Like, you could say, like, hey, Gears of War, they're chainsawing dudes, but, like, tonally, it's totally fucking goofy as shit. Outlast 2, Gore? Oh, it is. Like, ah, uh, fuck. I was saying something earlier. Um,. This is probably one of my favorite horror games of all time, and it's purely because like, I'll always argue that the power of horror games inherently have so much more power than horror movies because you're the one that has to press the stick, you're the one that has to hide, you're the one that has to confront it. A horror movie, you, if, if, even if you're scared of shit, you can close your eyes, you can wait for the part to be over. Like, yeah, no, you can't do that in a game. It's it's fucked. Um, but they just have their pacing down to a freaking T. And like, I feel like that's a lost, um, no, no one really talks about it in games and, and, uh, it's, it's a lost art, especially with, uh, with open world stuff, like, like any, any facade of like pacing and like, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that that's just out the window, like, like main pacing and like, and the front facing narrative, like that, that's, that's just gone. Uh, when you can do like 50 hours of stuff in between. So this is just a, Oh yeah, yes, uh, Candy. Dead Space Two is very good in that regard. Yeah. Uh, Dead. I I was also going to point out Outlast and Dead Space, like the games that came around in that era, the horror games. I think mastered pacing to to like an insane degree. Like that was a time in horror game releases 
that pacing could not be beat. Like, mm-hmm. horror games were killing it. Like, the original Outlast does pacing so well with you just, like, going into the asylum in the first, like, 30 minutes. And you start to see spooky shit, and spooky shit jumps out at you. But the pacing in that game climbs up very incredibly well to what it's showing you. And Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2 especially. Like, just horror games in that era were so well done. And its pacing was outmatched. I don't know what the fuck happened. I mean, the Resident Evil 2 and 3 like, are really good, pacing-wise. And, like, I think Resident Evil 7 and 8 were also really good. But, mm-hmm. like... I don't know what happened after that. We just don't get good paced horror games anymore. Yeah. And then, um, because what the first one came out, was it 2012 or 2013? I feel like it came out on PC first. I could be it, wrong. Because then I remember it, it was a PlayStation Plus title. It was yeah. Like three PlayStation Plus titles. That's how I played it. Um, so I, I believe Outlast 2 came out to uh, 2017. Like from what I have seen, it, it's a I don't know if they're technically an indie team. I think they have like 30 or 40 people on the team. But man, this this game looks so fucking good. Like it looks better than a lot of uh, a lot of even more recent AAA games I've played. Like it runs at 4K 60 even on a uh, I guess Xbox One X, so last mid gen console whatever. But Man, it just looks good. It plays good. It's so fucking expertly paced. I, I, I haven't even talked about the one the one thing I love the most about it. It's um, I'm surprised other games haven't done it. So you know, like uh, uh, you know, Sarah, the first game you're using a um, you're using a camera the whole time. Yeah, and so you, green gave me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> like it- <laughs> it's like even at uh, sorry, Sarah's dying right now. It'll be okay. Um, so, so you can like record stuff. You can zoom in, but but the key way that it plays in is that you're you're constantly using the the night vision mode on the camera because like it doesn't it does not matter how much you fuck with your with your brightness settings. There's just going to be areas you cannot fucking see in unless you're using night vision, and um, that's a limited resource. You have to find new batteries, and it's it's not a big issue if you're if you're going forward at a decent pace. It's it's basically just so you're not killing a lot of time. To, to like kind of give you that extra push for forward momentum um but but even if you're trying to preserve like you could be hiding in the dark you turn on the uh the night vision you see someone like maybe they're turning the corner you maybe you think they see you turn off the light and you're just listening listening to footsteps coming close oh by the way you need to play the shit with headphones like any horror game play with headphones <laughs> um th- there's um there's one thing they added in here that's not in the first game. It has a the camera has a microphone, like a directional microphone, so you can you can toggle it on and you can get a better idea of, of where people are just based off of sound, like whether they're talking or they're walking around. And there is a segment in there where you specifically have to use it, and it is one of the creepiest fucking things I have seen in a game to date. Um, yeah, I I, I can gush about Outlast two all day. It is one by far one of the best horror games I've ever played. Um, if, if not being able to fight back against enemies is isn't your thing, this isn't the game for you. You can't do shit, which is kind of funny because you would think at points like yes, these are scary people and things you're, you're that are trying to kill you, but you would think at some point your character would be willing to square up by like throwing a rock or something. No, like no, this this guy is a pacifist. He doesn't want to do shit. Um, yeah, one of the best horror games of all time. I know Blaine on Twitter highlighted that there's some uh, problematic stuff with Outlast 1. There's some problematic stuff there's in 2. Stuff in, but There's definitely some worse stuff in 2. Yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. important to highlight that stuff. But yeah, still overall, one of my favorite horror games of all time. I would highly recommend it. Uh, that, that content warning list is really fucking high. So if, if you need content warnings for anything... Um, please, for the love of God, look it up because that game does not have a content warning. If you want to be upset about a game not having a content warning, be upset at Outlast Two. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's about all I have to say about Outlast Two. Unless unless you have any questions. No, I I played it just at the time when I played it. I wasn't a fan of horror games that survived itself gen- like done nothing but jump scares because my anxiety can't do that. Uh, it's the reason my Dead Space 1 is so entirely hard for me to play. 
um, because that game just relies on it, and while I love the Dead Space series with all of my heart, and I'm so excited about the new one, um, or about the remake of the first one, I guess, I don't like when horror games seem to rely on that, and I feel like the Outlast series does. And also, they're weirdly making a co-op game next that still takes place in the same universe. Yeah, it's called, what, the uh, the Outlast <laughs> Trials? Yeah, and it takes place in the same universe. They confirmed on their website that it takes place, that it's a prequel to both Outlast 1 and Outlast 2. That Let's takes see. place in the 60s, I think. In the 60s or the 50s? It takes place in one of those, but they said it's a prequel and it's going to answer some of the questions that 1 and 2 raised, but it's going to be specifically played in co-op, which is weird. But, um, but I mean, no, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out, I guess. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll probably like watch someone else play it, but it's not my thing. I don't, I mean, the only co op horror I do are the Resident Evil games that are co op, and that's about it. Um, because I feel like horror should be handled alone, like, I don't think you should do horror with, uh, with other people. I agree with that, absolutely. It just kind of destroys the, I mean, like, obviously, there's like, there's like phantasmophobia and stuff like that which work well with other people but i also just on the thing for horror should be single player for what it's worth phasmophobia is still scary as shit <laughs> go up oh Corey, no cory can attest to that oh no i'm sure it's just to me seeing all these like co-op horror games or is 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 very weird like it's very strange to me to see all these games that are co-op that Right itself on being scary is like super funky to me, but I mean, hey, if that's what people are into, I'm definitely not one to judge. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go over some of these uh, questions and statements in here. Uh, Emily mostly remembers, uh, I guess, Outlast One because of the creepy doctor with his dick yeah, yeah, yeah. out. Because <laughs> your because your head is there mm. right at it. And you're but, like, yeah, <laughs> it's I I haven't, I haven't played that in like eight years, but. Maybe I might have to go back uh, to see some flailing dick. Uh, <laughs> it's not as good as you think it is. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I think it came out a year before, but not sure. Remember 2017 for being the Persona 5 slash Nier Automata year. That is a good way to remember uh, 2017. Yep. 20, 2017 was a fucking good year for games. You got Mario, you got Breath of the Wild, Persona 5, Nier, uh, Horizon, Resident Evil 7. It was also when the Switch came out. Fingerompa V3, Eternal Game of the Year came out 2017. Uh, like, that was a crazy year. 2017 is a good fucking year for games. Uh, King, Kingdom Hearts and Resident Evil came out on the same day. Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, 2.8. Okay, there we go. One that had a 3 in it, and the weird movie on the 0 0.2, like the first playable demo of Kingdom Hearts 3. That came out the same day as Resident Evil 7. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was a crazy day. <laughs> See, uh, Emily says, if you guys really enjoy spooky stuff, Half Life Alex is actually pretty spooky, surprisingly. I have. You know, oh, I, I was just going to say, there's a lot of like good horror stuff, even in Half Life Two, like in Ravenholm. So I imagine in VR, it's just like, and it's, it's just inherently way scarier. Yeah, I just imagine head crabs in VR. That's just where my brain goes. If a head crab jumps on you and kills you, do you just see like it's inside of its little chest belly, just in front of your eyes, or how how does that work? I mean that sounds like a that sounds like if a face hugger jumps on you, or it sounds like <laughs> that uh, that uh, VR Alien Covenant like experimental film that they came out with, where you're playing like a chest burster, like trying to wriggle out of someone's chest. Oh shit! And it's like I I watched someone posted it online where you could watch it where it's like non in VR, so it kind of kills the like kills the like meaning of it. But that's incredibly creepy because you're literally like playing a chest burster. It just like woke up and is trying to like get its way out, and you hear like cracking of the like ribs and stuff. It's cook. If you are able to find that, please send that to me. I, I would love to see uh, that. I think it's on the Oculus Store. I can boot up my Oculus after we're done, and I can check it to see if it's on there still. Okay. But yeah, let's, like that was really creepy. See, so, uh, Candy says Jose played a. You know what? Man, I, I've been I've been meaning to because you've recommended it before, and it's just a lot of things evade my mind. What everything goes like out one or in one ear, out the other. Just the list of games is ever increasing, and that's definitely something I need to get around to. Um, Emily says, like to hear about the oh the uh, problematic stuff. Uh, from what I recall from Blaine is that uh, the DLC for Outlast One, uh, there's a 
I mean, there, there's a there's a stuff with um, the people. Uh, what, what's what's the word? De dehumanizing people's mental illness because you know you're in asylum. It's crazy people. It's kind of using that aesthetic. Um, the game justifies it by saying like they were criminals. Um, take it as you will. Um, in the first, I guess first and only DLC for the first game. Um, there's a there's a enemy called the groom. I guess he castrates people and turns people into his brides. Yes. Uh, that can be seen as a uh, cis. Uh, how do you say it? Cis, cis sexist. Um, that that's how Blaine has explained it to me. Outlast Two has a trans character that later um does undesired sexual things um to yourself. Um, that's not a great optic look when that's the only. Uh, representation within your game um so yeah important to point that stuff out still uh still a great game in my eyes uh but just important to point that out uh ch -ch -ch. last tweet about yeah series x incredible console absolutely freaking love it it, it is, is my go-to console um yeah that, that 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 part of the game's rough um yeah that that, that game needs a huge content warning for many, 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 many reasons. Um, if that's a game, if there's a game to get mad at for lack of content warning, that that is the one. Uh, but if you're able to put up with that, or able to separate art from artist, or whatever tangentially related things, still a great game. I highly recommend it.